This is lesson 5.5, very near the end now. And I just wanted to go right back to the beginning and talk about the ARF format a little bit more. So remember, in an ARF file, it starts out with an at relation to name the relation, and then some at attribute statements, one for each attribute, and it declares them to be nominal, in which case it gives the values, or numeric, integer or real, it's the same thing. Uh, they're all numeric for, uh, for Weka, and there are also string attributes. And then there's an at data line, and then following that is uh, for each instance, there's one data line. We use uh, question mark for missing values. And of course, there are comment lines beginning with percent. Well, you know all that, but there's a few more things that you don't know. So first of all, we can have sparse ARF files. There's a sparse format and filters non-sparse to sparse and sp sparse to non-sparse. Uh, so here's a, an example of the weather data. First of all, the, in the regular format, both the sparse and the regular format have the same header. And on the left is the regular format, on the right is the sparse format. And the first instance, which is sunny, hot, high, false, no, well, in the sparse format, the first value of attributes is just sort of, if, if the attribute has a first value, then that's considered the default. So sunny, hot, high are all default. So the first instance in the sparse format is three, attribute number three, we count from zero. Uh, attribute number three is false and four is no. And then the second instance, sunny, hot, high, true, no. Well, uh, the first, uh, sunny, hot, high, true, those are all defaults. Those are all the first possible values as declared in the RF header. So we don't need to specify those. We just specify that the fourth attribute, numbering again from zero, is a no. And the third instance, overcast, well, that's not the first value for Outlook. So we've got to specify that. So we say the zeroth instance is overcast. And then hot, high, and yes are all default, but false isn't. So we say the third attribute is false. And so we go on, just specify those attributes that do not have the first value. All classifiers accept sparse data as input, but some of them uh, just nullify the savings by expanding the sparse data internally. But others actually use sparsity to speed up the computation, and good examples are naive Bayes multinomial and SMO. And there's a couple of filters. Uh, the string to word vector filter, for example, produces sparse output. So if you use the string to word vector filter in combination with multinomial naive base, you get a very fast system. And you probably noticed that when you were doing document classification. OK, there's a couple of other features. So weighted instances. We talked a lot now and again about uh, instances being weighted internally to Weka. Well, you can specify weighted instances in ARF files in curly brackets, again, at the end of the instance. So again, in the weather data, we've got a couple of instances here. And the first instance has got a weight of 0 0.5. And the second instance has got a weight of 2. And if weights are missing, of course, they're assumed to be 1. So you can specify weights explicitly in your ARF file. Uh, there are also date attributes. I won't go into the format. And you can have relational attributes, which are really intended for multi-instance learning, which we haven't touched upon in this course. There's an XML version of the ARF format called XRFF. I don't know how to pronounce that. And uh, the Explorer can read and write XRFF files. It's very verbose. So here's an example uh, for each. We've got the header. And then at the end of the header, we've got the body. And the header contains the ARF header. And the body contains the data, the instances. So in the header, there's a bit for each attribute, where it specifies the name of the attribute and the type of the attribute, and if it's a nominal attribute, the possible labels for it, for each attribute. And then in the body, we say instances. And within instances, we have instance, and define the first instance, define the attribute values. And then we would follow that with another instance, defining the second instance, and so on. It's the same information as ARF files. It's clearly uh, very verbose. 
um, you can have uh, a little bit, you can have instance weights, uh, just as you can with our files. You can do a little bit more than you can with our files. In the XML format, you can specify which is the class attribute, which, remember, Weka always assumes by default that the last attribute is the class. But there's no way to change that in an ARF file. Well, there is in an XRFF file. And there are, you can also specify attribute weights to have weighted attributes. So there's a compressed version of this, the .xrff.gz, and uh, the Explorer can read and write those files as well. So you should know about that. And so that's it. ARF has got some extra features that you didn't know about. The sparse format, instance weights, date attributes, and relational attributes. And some filters and classifiers take advantage of the sparsity to operate more efficiently in both time and space. XRFF is an XML equivalent of ARF plus some additional features. That's it. So there is an activity associated with this lesson. Off you go and do it, and we'll see you in the last lesson. Bye for now.